A few months ago, I released a video which explained how to produce HDR content without using an HDR monitor. And I stand by that video as an accessible way to produce a good enough HDR color grade. However, as I mentioned in that video, for true professional HDR grading, you do need an HDR mastering display. This workflow is not the correct way of doing things. It simply allows you to approximate a true HDR image on an SDR display. However, doing things the correct way still doesn't necessarily require spending 30 grand on a monitor. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing what I believe is the most practical middle ground. If you have some budget to spend on an HDR display, but you're not prepared to go all in on a Hollywood grade monitor, then stick around. And even if you're not looking to upgrade your setup right this minute, you still might learn something. So without further ado, let's discuss my new bang for the buck HDR grading setup. So the first thing we'll need is an HDR display. Now in recent years, there have been an increasing number of budget HDR reference monitors hitting the market. Displays like the Apple Pro Display XDR or the ASUS ProArt lineup claim to deliver color accuracy on par with reference monitors for considerably less money. But although these sorts of products may be cheap in comparison to reference displays, they're still very expensive by the standards of most mortals. So to find the best bang for the buck HDR display, we actually have to turn to consumer grade TVs. Now look, I get it. TVs don't exactly have a great reputation for color accuracy, since they're often calibrated to prioritize vibrance over accuracy. Now we could try to calibrate the display ourselves, but most of the time when you calibrate a display, you have to install the calibration on the device which is connected to the display and not the display itself. This can be a headache because you often have to fiddle with your settings in order to make sure that the calibration is always applied once, but never more than once. However, what if we could upload a calibration to the display itself and replace the existing color profiles with more accurate versions? Well, as it happens, certain displays from LG's OLED lineup will actually allow you to do this. And not only that, but they also offer pretty decent HDR capabilities for the money. So a few months ago, I purchased an LG C10 55 inch OLED TV to act as my new reference display for HDR content. As an OLED, it's capable of perfect contrast with no need for backlight dimming zones. It offers good coverage of the DCI-P3 color space, has a true 10-bit panel, and is capable of reproducing peak brightnesses in the neighborhood of 700 nits or so, depending on the scene. So while there are some limitations to be aware of in comparison to a professional display, I can say that the raw HDR capabilities of this display are sufficient to accurately reproduce the majority of scenes. However, while this TV is theoretically capable of accurate HDR reproduction, that doesn't mean that you'll be getting an accurate image out of the box. As I said before, TVs are calibrated to stand out on a store shelf, not to faithfully reproduce a display standard. So in order to use this display for color work, we will need to recalibrate it ourselves. And this is where our secret weapon comes into play. Meet the Calman Home for LG software. This program will not only allow us to create a calibration profile, but also to install that profile on the display itself in place of one of the existing display modes. Now, unfortunately, the Calman software does cost a bit of money, but just think of all the money you're saving relative to buying a reference display. That's a good enough reason, right? Anyway, once you have the software purchased and downloaded, you'll also need to buy one of these, a colorimeter. Colorimeters and display calibration in general are big topics which deserve their own video, but I'll go over the basics here. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is this. Using the Calman Home software, we're going to tell the TV to display a series of colors, and then we'll use the colorimeter to measure what colors the TV actually displayed. Using this information, the software can build up a profile of exactly how 
the TV is distorting color across the spectrum. And then it can build a new display profile for the TV that distorts color in the opposite direction. These two distortions will cancel out and the end result will be accurate color. Good enough for color grading anyway. Now while there are a wide range of color emitters available on the market, you want to make sure you get one which supports calibration in the HDR range, since some cheaper models are limited to working in SDR. I picked up the Calibrite Color Checker Display Plus, which is actually the same device as the existing X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus. It's the same thing, it was just rebranded. Before we begin the calibration, open up the colorimeter and then hang it off of the display like this, making sure that the sensor is flush against the front of the panel. All right, so let's get calibrating. The first step is we're gonna go ahead and plug our colorimeter into a computer. And then we're gonna go ahead and open up the Calman Home software here. All right, so in the Calman Home software, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up in the main menu. We're going to open workflow template, display specific, LG AutoCal. So we're going to go ahead and select that we have an OLED display. And we're going to select that we want to calibrate for HDR. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit find meter. And it's gonna go ahead and find our meter here. So the X-Rite i1 display OEM, that's correct. You're gonna to wanna to make sure the mode is set to raw XYZ, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna go up into the color emitter options here. We're going to make sure that the low light handler is enabled here. Okay. So next we're going to hit find source and the manufacturer is LG, and we have a 2020 TV. So the next thing we need is we need to find out the private IP address of our TV on the network. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they, your computer and your TV are on the same network. And then on the TV, we're gonna to go to network, and under our Wi-Fi connection, we're gonna go down to advanced Wi-Fi settings. And there is our IP address right there, 10.1.188.48. So we're gonna type that in, 10.1.188.48. We're gonna hit connect. Okay, and a pin is gonna come up on screen here, and we're gonna type that in, 179.86.495. Okay. All right. Now we're connected to our TV. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the, under settings here, the window size is set to window 10%. I don't believe that's the default. So window 10% with a delay of 0.75. And you're gonna to wanna to change the color space from SDR 709 to HDR 2020. That's very important. Okay, so next we're going to make sure our calibration targets are correct here. So we're going for Rec 2020. SD2084 with a white point of D65. That all looks correct. So we're gonna hit next. Okay, so next we're gonna do our pre-calibration measurements. And this is basically going to give us a baseline to compare against by measuring how accurate the display is before it undergoes calibration. So we're gonna go ahead and hit read series here. And our colorimeter is going to go ahead and start taking measurements. Prepare to fast forward. Preparing to fast forward. Fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. Okay, so with our pre-calibration measurements complete now, we can see that out of the box, our display is not very accurate at all. And all of these graphs are telling us exactly how far off every given color patch was from its expected value. And we can see there is a lot of deviation going on here. So this is not an accurate display as it is. And that's why we're going to calibrate it. So we're gonna hit next. Okay, so we're going to hit uh, Find LG TV again. So we're going to go ahead and select our specific model. So in this case, it is a 2020 uh, C10. All right, we're gonna type in the IP address again, 10.1.188.48, hit connect. Okay, and now we're going to pick which of our TV's display modes we're going to calibrate. So the thing is, we can't actually calibrate all of the TV's display profiles at once. We have to pick one and do them one at a time. 
So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and calibrate the HDR cinema profile. Now I did try to calibrate the HDR filmmaker mode profile, but I ran into some problems with that. So I'm going to stick with HDR cinema. So we're going to select that here, HDR cinema. And you're going to make sure that HDR is selected and BT 2020 is selected. And we're going to hit full DDC reset here. That's going to prepare the display for calibration. Okay. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and hit next. Okay, and then we're gonna to wanna to make sure that enable calibration is uh, checked. That's going to allow us to calibrate. We're gonna hit next. All right, and then now we're going to begin the calibration itself. So we're going to hit auto cal. All right, so we're gonna make sure that our grayscale points are 20 points HDR. Our delta E target is 0.5, that's all correct. So we're gonna hit okay. Okay, so this next part is really gonna take a while. So let's just go ahead and use some movie magic to uh, fast forward this. All right, that's done. So with the grayscale calibration complete, we can go ahead and hit next. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and calibrate our color space as well. So once again, we're gonna just go ahead and hit auto cal. And that's gonna run. Okay, and again, we can leave all of these options at uh, their default here. All right, so with that done, we're gonna go ahead and hit next again. Okay, so now on this next page, what we're going to do is we're going to design our HDR tone curve because this display is not capable of reproducing the full HDR range. So we have to tell it how we want to roll off those out of range values. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit measure peak luminance. And so this is gonna measure the maximum brightness output of our display. And give us a number here. And that's gonna be about 700. So it's the same as I had before. So we're going to put in about 701 nits. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and adjust our roll off points here. So I'm going to set this to 50, this to 40, and this to 30. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the on off button here to go ahead and upload our tone map. And then hit next. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and uncheck enable calibration. So this is gonna switch our uh, display back into its proper mode. All right, we're gonna hit next. And now we're going to go ahead and do our post calibration verification. So this is going to do the same test as our pre calibration measurements, but now it's going to run it again with the calibration applied to see how accurate of a job it did. So we're gonna go ahead and hit read series. Okay, so now that our post calibration verification is complete, we can take a look and see how good of a job it did. Okay, so what you wanna pay attention to is our average and maximum error here. And these are given in delta E's, which are a measurement of how far off of a particular target a value is. And to give you a bit of context, it's generally accepted that a delta E of less than two is going to be pretty much imperceptible to the eye. So as long as your maximum error is less than two, that generally means you have a pretty good calibration. So we can see that for color here, our maximum error is 1.7, and for grayscale, our maximum error is 1.9. It's a little bit close to the edge, but it's still good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next. All right, so this stage of the calibration process is complete. We can go ahead and close the CalMan software and move on to the next step of the process. Great, now we have a calibrated HDR display. Give yourself a pat on the back, watch an HDR movie, and then keep watching this video because there's still more work to do. See, well, you might think that connecting our TV up to Resolve would be as simple as just plugging in an HDMI cable and then tweaking a few settings. Unfortunately, that just isn't possible right now. While both Windows and Mac OS do support HDR output, at the time of writing this, they do not play nice with the way Resolve wants to handle HDR. If you set your display to HDR in Windows and then open up Resolve and say your output transformed to HDR, you'll see that the image on screen is not remotely accurate. And unfortunately, at the time of writing this, there's no way to fix this problem using software alone. What you'll need is one of these, a Blackmagic Decklink output card. While this might look like a graphics card circa 2003, it's actually a lot more interesting than that. 
An output card like this one basically allows graphics software like Resolve to bypass the operating system and take direct control over the signal being sent to a display. So just think about how much a Pro Display XDR costs, open up your wallet, and wait a second, because your computer might not support one of these. No, I'm serious. Unfortunately, output cards currently only exist in the form of PCIe expansion cards. So if you have a desktop PC or a 2019 Mac Pro with a free 8x expansion slot, then you'll be able to use one of these no problem. But if you have a laptop or a compact system which doesn't support expansion, then you may be out of luck. You might be able to get one working using something like an external Thunderbolt PCIe enclosure, but no promises. But if you've made it this far and you have a compatible PC, then go ahead and install the DeckLink card and connect your TV to it. It will not show up as a display in your operating system. Don't worry, that's normal. Next, you'll need to go to the Blackmagic support page and install the desktop video application. Then open up your project in Resolve, go to Preferences, Video and Audio I.O., and make sure your monitor device is set to the DeckLink Mini Monitor 4K. Turn on the TV and verify that it's displaying the output from Resolve. If you're working in 4K, you'll want to go into Project Settings and then Master Settings and change the output resolution of the card appropriately. While you're here, you can also enable HDR metadata over HDMI. And finally, you can go into your color management settings and switch the output transform to Rec 2020 ST2084. Your TV should then switch into HDR mode. Congratulations! Now you can actually use your new HDR display for its intended purpose. But as I mentioned earlier, there are some limitations to this display's ability to accurately represent HDR. The main one being brightness. For one thing, the TV's peak brightness is limited to around 700 nits, so any values brighter than that will not be represented accurately. And it isn't just the peak brightness that's limited, the average brightness is as well. Unlike LCD displays, OLED TVs like this one aren't capable of running all the pixels at maximum brightness simultaneously. There's a limit to how much total power the panel can use at once. And this power budget just isn't enough to blast pure white at 700 nits. Instead, you'll only end up getting around 150 nits, which is not good enough for HDR. In order to achieve the level of brightness required for good HDR, bright regions of an image have to be counterbalanced by darker regions, which will require less power. Thankfully, most real scenes will naturally have this property, with the majority of the image being occupied by midtones and only a few small highlights which require more power. So in most cases, you will be able to achieve a reasonably bright and accurate HDR image. However, if you're working with an especially bright scene, you might run into this issue. If you keep trying to increase the exposure of a shot, but the image just doesn't get brighter, then you're probably running up against your display's limited internal power budget. So unfortunately, you'll need to reduce your brightness in order to monitor the grade accurately. But with all that said, I've been using this workflow myself for the past few weeks, and I haven't run into any major issues with it. It's my goal to start producing and uploading videos in HDR whenever reasonably possible. And having a real-time preview of the HDR version of an image has been a tremendous help. Now this isn't the end of the story when it comes to my HDR journey. I still have a future video planned about how to migrate other aspects of your workflow, like visual effects, over to an HDR environment. However, this video is getting pretty long already, so I'll save that for another time. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. My name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.